All right, beginning ye 2.0. This is part 7 of 15, adding dynamic drop downs to our forms. So, what we're going to do today, well, we're going to add these drop downs to our forms. And now, there's two ways to do that. The first way is by using a function and some constants. And the second way, of course, is uh, pulling some uh, database information and adding that as an array. Uh, to our drop-down list in our form. Well, there's a lot to, uh, in here, so let's go ahead and get, let's get started. Remember, you can always go to the github.com, TSK Matrix, Yecom, to get the uh, code. And we'll be working in branch number seven until I get that merged up into the master. So uh, please use uh, branch seven. So let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into our administrative back end. Be sure you're logged in as the administrator or as a product manager because we're going to start working with products. And we want to uh, add new products. So we're going to create, I've already got five products in there. But what we need to do is this is what we, we get. Uh, rather plain Jane form, awfully large, uh, nothing really helpful. What I've done is I've added this drop down here. Well, how did I get this drop down? Okay, let's take a look at that. Remember in our Ecom Active Record PHP, we have not only our behaviors, but we have some constants and we have two functions. One is get gender options. Okay. And uh, that we have three different, it's asexual, male or female. Asexual being a product. So we come over to our form, our product form, and we see that we're using uh, helpers HTML and the active form uh, from uh, ye widgets. Okay, now what we'd want to do is we want to use the um, bootstrap. So we're going to change this to bootstrap active form. Okay, and then we need to use an array helper because uh, ye will now use our uh, it, it's using uh, array helper instead of chtml from e1 so let's do take a look at that okay so we're going to use our ye helpers array helper and i'm going to be using several of our uh, models in this one so i need to add those models suppliers brands product types and product categories And then I need to say, uh, I need to tell the active form that we're actually using the um, bootstrap active form. So I have to uh, modify. So I want to tell this that the layout is now uh, horizontal. And then I can change the size of these to be uh, using or to so they'll use the uh, um, CSS files correctly. So let's change up our name. Um, we really don't need to change all of it but I've already got it so what we did was we added this array right here to tell it that it's uh, using a small column four and that the maximum length is 500 well that's that's just fine so let's save that and let's go take a look at our form now and see what happens to name as you see name now is a little bit smaller but it's still large enough to see the name uh, we have a uh, drop down here, and we can change that up as well. 
we can make that a little bit smaller so that it's uh, it fits on the page a little better. So let's do that. And here is our prompt for our gender. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this uh, right here, gender. Okay. And we'll save that, and I'll show you how that uh, now changes that form. And watch how this gets a little smaller now. Probably a little too small, but uh, that's okay. But now we can say, hey, it's a asexual. It's uh, just a product. Uh, if we had something for a male or a female, we'd could put that in there. I think I'll make that just uh, a little bit smaller in our um, take our take that off. And now it'll just say choose a gender. And it's a little bit, little bit easier to see. Okay, now that's a simple one. Now let's take a look at that code and uh, see what we did here. What I did is I told it, hey, just use the model because uh, the gender is part of this uh, product model. And uh, we're going to get our gender options from our model. And it, you see where it's coming from is common models, ye, com, active record, get gender options. And then I've got a prompt, uh, which is an, uh, an option for the uh, drop-down list. These are our options. So we have our array here of... Uh, A, a list so we have that array here and it just shows us our list and it works uh, really great now what we need to do is we need to say well what product category ID are we going to be using well, we're going to change this up a little bit but before we do that we have to tell it that uh, we have some uh, we have a uh, data model that we're going to use we're going to use this active array uh, helper here. Okay, so we need to add this line right here. So our data product category variable holds our array. It's the array helper. Uh, we're doing our product categories and we're finding as an array everything and we're only returning the product category ID and the name. So now in our product category ID right here, we're going to uh, add some uh, CSS and then we're going to change this to a drop down list. Okay, so we need to do that. That's easy enough to do. There we go. And so we save this and we take a look and we see how that uh, now looks. I used uh, 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 three columns there instead of uh, two. So it'll go out far enough. And we have a choose a category. And now all of our categories will show up here and you can choose a category for the product category ID. We'll do the same thing for supplier and brand and product type IDs and uh, that should uh, pretty much handle everything. Uh, one of the things you do want to do is uh, here in our form is we're going to get rid of our some things that we don't need. Uh, this published on right now uh, I'm working on a little something that will 
Um, I think we'll use a touch class on that one and we'll just touch that and, and that'll be a, 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 a published on will be uh, uh, using a timestamp behavior uh, but it'll be a touch okay okay so I have uh, finished doing my uh, CSS and I've commented out this published on field so we have a supplier a brand and a type and of course our category and our gender drop downs and they'll be in there just uh, Oops, I forgot to add my data for my other three drop downs there. There we are. So now we have uh, data suppliers, data brands, and data product types. Uh, we're mapping those to product types, uh, mapping them to brands and suppliers, and we know what we need there. And we're getting back an ID and a name. And so what it'll show, it'll show the name, and then it'll show an, uh, the ID is our uh, value. Okay. So now we can go back to that slight mistake there. And there we go. Now since we don't have any suppliers or brands or product types in there, it's just uh, pretty much a null, but we do have a gender. And once again, I need to real quickly get that out of there. That choose a gender needs to be just by itself. And we'll refresh that and get a better look. There we go. So we do have our drop downs that do work so that's how you do those drop downs so you can either have uh, some constants or you can use uh, the database and pull information out of the database and uh, display it as a drop down real simple uh, I really like that so uh, we'll get on to the next uh, step here